the Azov Battalion and Right Sector and Centuria and all of these other neo-Nazi forces in Ukraine have, for the past decade, said explicitly that their goal is not just to win power in Ukraine, but to win power in all of Europe. That's been the goal. There, there's a term for it. It's called reformation or something like that, um, where you know basically it's about having a Fourth Reich. And yeah. there's been the showdown in Lviv, which is a major through point in the West for uh, supplies to the front lines um, because yes. it's in the West of Ukraine. It, it's not far from Poland. Um, and it's a, and a and it, it's a stronghold, a long, long time stronghold for uh, far right neo Nazi ultranationalists, whatever you want to call them. Um, and the mayor of Lviv has uh, criticized quote unquote language patrols, basically vigilante groups that wander around, uh, ensuring that people are not speaking in Russian because. Use of the Russian language is forbidden in Ukraine. So he said in this interview at the top here, this topic has always been exploited by pro-Russian forces or those who receive funding from the aggressor country. They will throw in billions to destabilize the situation in Ukraine because they have already realized that they will not be able to capture us as they planned. So they will throw in funds to support various nationalist radical movements will support a, a la military organizations from their angle and will spend billions on propaganda. You need to be ready for this. You need to understand this. So he, again, he's talking about these people running these language patrols. And I'm going to pull up the video that was uh, a response to this. So the right sector, one of the leaders of the Maidan coup, mm -hmm. uh, held a protest outside the mayor's office. And I'm just going to yes. pull it up really quickly. Get, uh, just yeah. a moment. Sure. Two more seconds. That's all right. <laughs> well, shit. Active measures. Oh, oh man. Zel Zelensky's drug dealer. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we've been we've been sitting on that. One for a while, huh? Yeah, absolutely. Well, we didn't want to tell anyone because it was quite embarrassing. But um, I mean, now you know, now now it's all over. We can we can come clear on that controversy. Um, yeah, like I mean, I just think that it's it, it, it's yeah. again, it's the last days of the last days of the Third Reich here. You know, it's like it was like when Hitler was like recruiting all of these children and saying we've never been closer to victory, while like the Soviets like raped and pillaged their way towards berlin like you know advancing like many kilometers <laughs> um, per day yeah so we have the video here i'm just gonna it's playing there right no yeah. so this is the video from right sector ivan smaga the head of right sector in lviv Threatening yeah. to kill the mayor of Lviv. Dear respected Andrei, dear re disrespected Andrei Sadovi, that's the mayor. My my brothers told me not to raise this issue. God forbid if it is said again that perhaps national nationalist movements or a la military military structures will be financed from the Moscow pocket pocket. This will be the last thing you say in your life. I do not speak for everyone. I speak for myself. And we see these lovely torches uh, in the background. This is outside the mayor's office. This is uh, this is again open threats against the Ukrainian government by neo Nazis. And if we go over the history of this war, even prior to the uh, the launch of the special operation by Russia, this has been a longstanding tradition. Vladimir Zelensky himself was threatened uh, at the start mm. uh, b b before the SMO by by Azov, who when Zelensky tried to withdraw from the front line due to a peace agreement with Russia. They said, no, we're sending more and we're coming after you next. So when the funds dry up for our dear Vladimir, these are the people who are going to be 
at the front of the uh, of, of, of of the conversation as far as who takes power next. And they've long, long, long held that as- aspiration. There was a similar story in Lviv, again, a stronghold of the right sector and neo-Nazi forces uh, that you reported on. I don't know if you want to talk about that. Do you? Or you want to wrap up? Yeah, sure. So, yeah, sure. So it's like, yeah, I mean, as I mentioned, like Lviv or Lvov is like, it is historically Polish territory and it's where, um, uh, but it's also where um, Stepan Bandera, uh, Alex's dear friend, um, who is the, this like kind of, uh, the, 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 uh, regarded in Ukrainian nationalist circles as you know, the kind of the godfather of Ukrainian nationalism. Um, like he um, massacred an enormous number of, um, of Jews and Poles. Um, this territory was given to Ukraine um, after um, the end of World War II uh, by Stalin. And um, ever ever after, it has operated as a hotbed of CIA and MI6 um, meddling and the, the management of both covert and overt of fascist uh, paramilitary groups, uh, quote unquote, resistance groups. Um, like one of the people who was at the forefront of this for many years uh, was this woman called Irina Farian, who she she uh, was a very prominent Ukraine ultranationalist who um, was calling for children who in Ukraine who spoke Russian to be deported to Russia um, and uh, for many years. Um, but, you know, at, uh, for uh, under Ukraine's constitution, you know, respect for difference was um, um, and uh, uh, in cultural inclusion was hardwired in, into it. And, you know, she repeatedly faced criminal charges for her public statements and pronouncements. Um, yeah, uh, once um, Maidan swept away um, that constitution and let the CIA and MI6 and Monsanto get their claws into Ukraine, um, suddenly uh, she was able to say all of these horrendous things um, without fear of prosecution and she ran for parliament and managed to get in one time um she was shot dead in july this year in lviv in broad daylight um and um it was her crime was to criticize fighters with azov regiment which is of course this neo-nazi um uh, uh mi- military unit um to uh, to, uh she was criticizing them for speaking russian and saying you cannot be considered patriotic or fighting for your country if you speak russian and so she was apparently without any um uh assistance killed by an 18 year old neo-nazi who was sat outside her apartment day in day out for many days leading up to this was seen by many people photographed because he was acting suspiciously and um yeah uh and then boasted about the crime on telegram and led police straight to his door um, i'm sure there's nothing suspicious about this but uh, i mean i i speculated at the time that this might have been getting rid of people who would stand in the way of like a peace agreement and this is the thing is that if you look at uh, as we discussed on on last week's show, it has been reported by the BBC now that a significant number of Ukrainians are willing to trade territory. They wish that peace had been had at the start of this in 2022, when, again, as we've discussed on past active measures, Boris Johnson personally flew to Kiev to, to torpedo um, peace negotiations, which were a signature away from, from ending this nightmare, which is still going on now. Um, you know, like two and a half years later, um, and it's just like, yeah, the the, the um, I think that there's, yeah, there's the, the uh, and Alex has done some incredible reporting in the past on how like members of Azov regiment like threatened Zelensky when he he went to eastern Ukraine where they were posted and begged them to put down their arms and stop fighting. Um, so yeah, like the the prospect of him get, of, of Zelensky getting killed and or cooed by these people is probably very high. Um, as you saw in that that very creepy video of um, of right sector, there aren't many of them, but they are completely insane and they have guns mm-hmm. and battle experience, so they're very dangerous. Yeah, and so I mean, here's the deal too. I mean. Uh... You can see from both your story and 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 this right sector story that the issue of Russian language speakers is at the top in Ukraine. Yes, and people in the West don't like people in their country speaking Russian. Well, where do the Russian people speaking people live? In all of the areas that Russia is trying to annex. So mm-hmm. and, and 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 the places where Trump and others seem to be trying to get Ukraine to concede. So. Uh, 
I think that it's a matter of time before those areas are given to Russia in a peace deal. But what happens in the west of Ukraine, where groups like Right Sector have maintained uh, historical popularity, um, where the Azov Battalion is glorified as heroes, um, that uh, it, it, it's not difficult to imagine that Ukraine will be divided and it will be, on one side, a neo-Nazi forward operating base against Russia, controlled by the mm. West, and on the right side of the map, uh, a, 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 a buffer for Russia. So yeah. I wanted to bring that story to our audience. Hey, everyone. Um, if you enjoyed this video or, or any of our other content, uh, please give us a follow on Twitter or subscribe to us on YouTube. It will help us beat the algorithm oligarchs. Thank you.